All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Finally, we are uh, live on air. Uh, you know, uh, the live stream in the restream program or software or website was not working, so we had to switch to StreamYard, as you see. And this is what happened to you when you depend on a free service. Anyway, my service is for free, but it's good. It's not like theirs. So they say it's free, but obviously, unless you pay them money, they will not let make it work. Today, our topic is about, again, how Muslims are silly and how they are. You see, uh, uh, you know, the world is full of, full of foolish people. And foolish can be exist between us, our people, and their people, and all kinds of people. The Bible says that my nation being destroyed because of their ignorance. And this is absolutely true. Ignorance is our enemy. You see, I'm not fighting the Muslims. I don't hate the Muslims, and all of you, you know that. I'm fighting their ignorance. I'm fighting the ignorance of the Muslims and ignorance of the Christians too, because many of us are Christian by name and do not know what even they believe in. And actually today is an example of that. So the Abdul, uh, you know, the Abdul, they have a channel, it's called uh, Pervert, Islam Pervert, or sorry, Islam Revert, Revert. Anyway, you have to be a pervert to accept to be a part of religion, promise new sex room, you will live in a room full of women naked, and you will be doing nothing to have except even being effed or being effing. Excuse my language, but this is the truth, and this is the fact which nobody want to say it as it is. As you know, I don't sugarcoat things. So, uh, this is a female Muslim, and supposedly, maybe she is a convert or something, I'm not sure. But the channel, it says that she is supposedly a convert. And, you know, this, this uh, lady, she have a question which you Christians cannot answer. I feel sorry for you. I don't know even how we can answer her. How you can answer her? None of you can do that. It's impossible. That is a mission impossible. You know, a question to the Christians. <laughs> question to the Christians. Sometime, you ask yourself, when a human being, he look like one, appear like one, does it mean really he have a brain of a human being? Listen carefully to this, what this girl she want to say. Another question for the Christians, and my mother actually asked this question, so don't come for me, or come for me, I really don't care. So She is brave, as if we are fighting, or you know, do you see... You see how Islam make you uh, like a creature of aggression? Come to me or don't come to me. I don't care. Like, it's a question. What come to me? Don't come to me. Are you going to pull the hair of some girls around you? So what is the question? What is the question? Which is really making you so upset. For me. Or come for me. I really don't care. Huh. So if Jesus is a part of this trinity, if Jesus is the son of God, and Jesus died on the cross... Uh -huh. He rose three days after the after the crucifixion. Uh -huh. Where's he at? He should still. You stupid! Uh, you, you just you guys, can you believe the stupidity? She said, and he rose after three days. Where is hat? Where is he now? This very blonde Muslim is giving us a very blonde question. If Jesus been rose from the grave. Where he is at now? Now you Christian, you start looking for Jesus. Hey Christians, can you make some phone calls? You have a super challenge. If Jesus is the Son of God, and he is part of the Trinity, and he died, and he was in the grave, and he rose, so where he is at now? Hmm. Sister, did you look around like in the town? Did you search for his Facebook page, maybe? I mean, can you believe how stupid a human being can be? She just said he's rose. She just said he rose from the grave. So what you expect him to be is stupid when we say rose. Doesn't mean he's still alive between us, uh, like as a, you know, the way he was. And the Bible says he went to heaven. And not only that, the stupidity continue. And she challenged you a bigger challenge. Look at this. 
He should still be here, right? He should be here, right? He shall be still here, right? Right, you're very right. And those are the Muslims saying that this woman, she is a convert. So how she is a convert, but she never learned. She is in the size of a donkey. She never learned that the Christian believed that Jesus, he rose from the grave in the third day, and he went to heaven. There is no way she was a Christian for a second. And her mom, she is asking the same question. So look like this is run in the family. The whole family are stupid. What else? Okay, so now where is he? We answer you. He is in heaven. Even the stupid Quran say Jesus in heaven, you donkey. He should still be here, right? No, no, he's not. Where's Jesus' body? If, if, if. She just said he rose from the grave. Where is Jesus' body? <laughs> and you know... <laughs> Jesus, buddy, <laughs> you stupid! You just said he rose from the grave. What do you mean? What is Jesus, buddy? <laughs> any, any? There's any blonde girl here in the chat? I'm not talking about you, okay? But I, I, I became really sensitive to blonde girls these days. I mean, look at this. What the heck is that? Where do you get this intelligence from? Are you like that by birth or after an accident? Where is his body? Where's Jesus? If he rose from the dead three days after the crucifixion, then where is he at? He should still be here, right? Mm. <laughs> where's the grave? And she have tens of tattoos over her fingers. <laughs> Too much drugs, obviously, the drugs she used to take, you know, damage her brain. Of Jesus. Mm. Answers. And it's Where is the grave of Jesus, you stupid donkey, Mutagur? Just search in Google right now. You will see the grave of Jesus. Actually, if you if you look for your video underneath of your video, you will see there is a tomb of Jesus, empty tomb of Jesus. Stupid, savage, silly. I don't know. Even the word stupid is is useless with those people. It's an insult to stupidity to call you stupid. They're God, you don't understand what the Trinity is. Their God don't understand what Christian believe. Their God think that Mary, she is part of the Trinity. The Muslim, they're asking questions which is absolutely stupid, silly, and even, I mean, a kid is seven years old. Uh, he, uh, we are in the time of, of the internet, everything. Like, let's say you are ignorant. Let's say you are born, uh, you know, you in a little village somewhere there is nothing but today even villages they have internet they have electricity you know what what are you talking about so you have a phone you have internet and you are in tiktok and you are wearing hijab and uh, now you are defending islam but obviously your islam is a stupid islam and by the way instead of being angry about where is jesus tomb which is exist until now, it's one of the most important churches for the Christians in the world. In Jerusalem, you idiot. Aren't you worried about how many time, how many women they will be sleeping with you in one bed in the heaven of Allah? Aren't you worried about your husband, he will have an endless penis? Is it right that he will be doing to you dahman, dahman, and long line of women? You have no shame. Sex party? A person who accepts Islam as a religion, male or a female, he has to be a pervert. For the God of the religion is a sexual pervert, God. You see, because Muhammad he is speaking to men, he was promising a lot of sexual promises. Because men, they've been driven by sex drive. But women is driven by what? You have no emotion. Allah will take your emotion from you. According to Muhammad, Allah will take your jealousy. So you will become a sex Barbie. So they are so angry, so upset, and so challenging to the Christians. 
First of all, you are not a person who believe in the God of the Christians. You do not know the God of the Christians. You do not know the God of Abraham. You are an idol worshiper. Your prophet is Najis, and he is a pedophile, and he's a child molester, and he's a thief, and he's a cheater. He told his wife to go visit her father so he can sleep with the maid. The wife, she went to the father, she asked him, did you ask for me? He said, no. <laughs> what the heck? What are you doing here? Oh, I, the prophet, he told me you called for me. <laughs> so, uh, those people, they have, you see, this is why you need to educate your children. Those, if this is a woman, she is a convert, really. Uh, this is telling you what kind of uh, family she grew up in. Zero education. Maybe drugs families. Because it's a, this is very basic for any Christian to know. So they, when they say to you, those are convert, they used to be Christian, this is absolutely false because there is no Christian would ask such a question. I remember once, many times actually, uh, somebody called me and he claimed to be a convert. So I tell him, tell me about, uh, uh, tell, me, tell me something about uh, the Bible of Jefferson. I just uh, like to throw any name at him. And he starts saying, yeah, I can tell you. I said, yeah, about the Bible of Jefferson or the Bible of uh, uh, Magellan. Huh? Or uh, what do you know about the Bible of Columbus? You know? So uh, right away he starts giving you ideas about the Bible of Columbus which is, uh, do you know, I say to him, what chapter you are reading from? I mean, we have a lot of hilarious time with those Muslims who claim to be convert. But it's possible that this woman, she is a convert, but obviously she never been a Christian, and she is so stupid to be Christian. Now I have a challenge for the Muslims. As long as this woman, she is asking, where is Jesus? Who is a Muslim with a volunteer in the chat and tell her, where is Jesus now? Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim would like to volunteer and tell us, where is Jesus now? Hmm? Anyone? Who is a Muslim? He can't tell us. Why Muslims are ashamed? I'm sure there's many Muslims here. Who is a Muslim? Can't tell us. Where is Jesus now? Do you know what the Muslim will say? Even though they are shy and ashamed to answer? Jesus in heaven. Okay, where is Muhammad now? The answer is a shameful too. Muhammad is in the grave. Then shouldn't we ask ourselves a very simple question? Why Jesus? If Jesus is a Muslim, Muhammad is a Muslim, and Muhammad is the highest prophet in the world, why the one he is the highest, he is the lowest, and one who is not the highest is the highest? Because the one in heaven, obviously, is the one enjoying life, for thousands of years, and where he is now? In the heaven. With who? With God? So, while Muhammad is accompanying cockroaches and rats in his grave and a scorpion, Jesus, as we speak, he is in heaven listening to us. So, where is Muhammad? Any Muslim would like to tell us? Why you Muslims are really silly and why you come with silly stupid questions which is embarrassing to you, embarrassment to your religion, embarrassment to your teaching, embarrassment to your Allah. Even the Quran, even the stupid Quran, the yellow pages of the Najis Muhammad say clearly that they crucified Jesus actually. How? The Quran says that the one who was in the cross, he looked exactly like Jesus. And it says that the one who looked like Jesus was crucified. 
Okay. So if a person, he looked like Jesus, he have the voice of Jesus, he have the eyes of Jesus, he have the hair of Jesus, he have the height of Jesus. Even his mother, she was in front of him, she did not recognize that this is not her son. How you Muslims deny that Jesus was crucified? And then the Muslim, we ask them, how the Quran work? When the Quran says that it, it was made to them, it was made to them to capture and to arrest and to crucify someone look exactly like Jesus. Any Muslim can explain to us how that is possible? You see, when I enter in Singapore, almost I was arrested. Uh, you know, my, they scanned my passport, and uh, my passport made a beep, beep. First one, I said, oh, oh, oh. And then there is a red, li red light. Second time, she put it in the beep, red light. Oh, boy. And then a guy, he walked toward me, and he said, sir, follow me. Okay. And they asked me to have a seat. Took them like 15 minutes and they were checking my passport to see because I'm a Middle Eastern and Arab and I look like a terrorist to be honest with you, scared the hell of them. And they are watching me clearly, no closely. Uh, I think they were going to close the airport. I, I'm thinking of, I think it's going to happen. It was going to happen almost. So after 15 minutes, they call me, they say, okay, well, there was a, you know, we check your passport is fine. Everything is good. Sorry to, you know, to stop you. You are free to go. So how a stupid passport can prove my identity to people who never met me before? But your stupid God claiming that someone look exactly like Jesus, even the Muslim, they claim that he created someone, he made the look of Jesus in someone else which means his fingerprint, his eyes, his face, everything. How a stupid computer can, can verify who am I, but the stupid Allah claiming that this is someone look like Jesus and he made him look like him. Then we ask the question, What is the purpose of this cloning Jesus? The cloning God. So God, he cloned Jesus. So now we have two Jesus. And now as long as we have two Jesus, how we know that the Jews did not arrest the true Jesus? <laughs> yes, do you know what I'm saying? If there is two guys, they look exactly the same. What is the guarantee? that they did not take the right one. <laughs> because making them two doesn't make any difference. Especially if, if, if the arrest, like, you know, uh, if, if the Muslims, they say that Allah, he took Jesus to heaven before the arrest, that is even more stupid. Because what the point is making someone look like Jesus if Jesus is already saved? You know what I mean? Where was the... <laughs> hey Muslims, why Allah he cloned Jesus? They will say to you, because he want to save him. Okay. But did Allah take Jesus to heaven before they arrested the fake Jesus or after? Any Muslim can give us the answer so we can die laughing? Very simple question. Uh, guys, I hope you are taking notes because every single one of those questions will make a Muslim crumble and go in a, in, a, in a corner. Like, you know, like what? Was he cloned before the arrest? Muslim will say, sure, yeah, must be before the arrest. Okay. Was Jesus taken to heaven before the arrest or after the arrest? Who want to help us? Any Muhammadan? 
if Muhammadan come to the chat now, do you know what he will ask you? <laughs> Christian believe in three gods. Any question is an embarrassing for them, they switch to talk about the Trinity. The Trinity is the rope they try to escape with it from the embarrassment of the stupidity of this religion. In the best scenario, yeah, they say Allahu Alam, Allah knows best, and then we find that Allah knows nothing. If Allah knows best, He should know that the sun does not set in murky water, and there's nobody lived next to where the sun set. Where where is sunset, Muslims? <laughs> the guy he keep walking until he found where the sunset. And this is from his perspective. It says he found it. So Muslims, was Allah, was Allah able to rescue Jesus from the Jews before the arrest or after the arrest? Who want to give us the answer? Let us go to the Quran and it's time to change this stupid picture from our face. You know? Unbelievable. Let us go to the Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad, which nobody knows who is the one who is the author of the Quran, by the way. Even the Muslim, they say, there is like a 300, four, a 300 something uh, uh, campaign of Muhammad. The Quran was collected from them. So any of them can add as he wish, can he hide as he wish, a verse he don't like it, he hide it. The Quran was not collected by the Caliphate. The Caliphate did not even write one verse. If we can quote a verse, but let's go to the Quran. I will put it for you on the screen. Give me a second. When a Muslim he deny the crucifixion of Jesus, and by the way, the Muslims have nothing to do with Jesus anyway. Even their God, their God Muhammad, he failed to get the the, name, the correct name of Jesus. Who is this Isa? What Isa? We as an Arab Christians, we never heard of Isa. Not a single Arab Christians he ever, and we don't use the word Isa ever. If you go to chapter 5, verse number 157, see in the Quran have time to tell us about the flying carpet, the ring of Solomon. Uh, 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 Solomon he died, and he did not, nobody noticed that he is dead because he died holding a stick, which happened to my grandfather. By the way, my grandfather, he died like maybe 20 years ago. Nobody knows until now that he's dead. Why? Because when he died, he was holding a stick. So if you yourself, you are looking for an idea, how to fool those who, you know, like, I don't know, there maybe some people don't like you. And they will be happy that you died. So what do you do? The answer is very simple. When you die, you hold a stick. Very simple. Actually, if you don't believe me, here we go, we'll give you the verse in the Quran about the stick. The sticky God. And I know this God is telling the truth, brother. This is the stone, yeah. Okay. Oops. Brother. Hmm. Let us read uh, together. <coughs> In chapter 34, verse number 14, it says, at least let me be sure that uh, the page is clear for you guys. Here we go. Uh, all right. And when we decreed the death for him, nothing showed his death to them, save the creeping creatures of the earth, which, it, uh, what, which, what? Let me move the page. Uh, go, ignored uh, away his staff. Like, what the heck? It turned to be, and if you go to Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, he says that Suleiman, he was dead almost for a year. 
and nobody noticed that he is dead. The genie, his wife, his wife, she come. Honey, do you want to eat honey? Suleimani don't answer. She did not notice he's dead because he's standing. She comes second day. Honey, we did not do boom boom for a long time. You don't want to do boom boom? Suleiman don't answer. She come a week after. Honey, don't you want to go to the bathroom? You must be full of shit by now. Suleiman don't answer. The general of the army, sir, the enemy is approaching. Gog and Magog is almost here. What we should do? Suleiman is not answering. Afrit, Mr. Afrit from the genie, the leader of the genie, the fastest Afrit. Lubik, Shubik, your genie being a yadik, or the genie between your hands. Sir, what do you like me to do? Suleiman is not answering. Sir, we have a message from the most important and the smartest president in the world, Mr. Joe Biden. This guy, he have nukes and he forgot his name. He's asking you, do you know what is the code for the nuclear weapon? Suleiman is not answering. Sir, Putin, he attacked Ukraine. What we should do? Sir? Okay, sir, you don't want to answer. I get it. That means we do nothing. Thank you. I mean, what the heck? A king, his kingdom, his army can go all the way to Persia. He have a flying carpet, carry 600,000 chair, and hold his army equipment. He control the genie and mankind, and the bird and the chicken, by the bird, by the, by the ring. And now he is dead, holding a stick, and nobody noticed. The Muslim didn't question such a stupid thing. I mean, this is alone is enough to prove Muhammad to be a donkey. Who in the world want to believe such a garbage? You know what Muhammad remind me? There is a, there is a guy here have a very bad memory. He went to the doctor and he told him, Sir, I have a very bad memory. The doctor, he told him, you have to give me an example so I can understand. He said, I am telling you, I have a very bad memory. I said, okay, I got it, but what, like what? Like, what do you forget exactly? You have to tell me. The guy, he got upset and he said to him and he started looking at the table. He said, I am telling you, I have a bad memory. Memory. Come in. <laughs> he forgot that he was knocking at the table. So, so the stupid Muhammad, he forgot that the Jews are making fun of him when they tell him those stories. Those stories, they tell them to their, the, 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 those are bedtime story for the kids. The stupid Muhammad, he take it, he put it in the Quran as reality. A Jew, he knock at the table, Muhammad, he says, come in. in. Who's there? He's just knocking in front of you. Is they making fun of you? So they made fun of him when they asked him about Alexander the Great. They made fun of him when they asked him about the seven sleepers. They made fun of him when they told him about Suleiman. I mean, this guy, this is why the Quran says he's an ear. He's an ear. The Quran called him, describing ear. What ear mean? He is a guy, whatever he listen, he take, and he put it in his book. Uh, okay, we have people from South Africa. Welcome, my friend. What about North Africa? I hope we have many people from North Africa too. So look what happened here. We have Muslims who question silly things. Where is Jesus now? I mean, Jesus, Jesus in heaven. Even the Quran says in heaven. Where is that? Uh, where is his body? What body? You just strip it. You either just said he rose from the grave. What body? But they don't question. They don't. You know, I assure you, none of those Abdul even read his book. 
When you open Ibn Kathir and you see Ibn Kathir that saying that Suleiman was dead almost for a year and nobody noticed. Muhammad, he died, and the Muslim did not bury him for three days and he stink. So let us, let us make, a, make a little study. How Suleiman is dead for a year, standing or sitting, just because he's holding a stick. Nobody noticed, but Muhammad laying down on the bed, closing his eyes, everybody noticed that he's dead. Any Muslim can help us? Do you know what happened to Muhammad when he died? The hadith says, وَقَدْ رَبَى بَطْنَهُ His belly became so big, full of gas, which means he started farting when he was. And this is what Ibn Abbas says. He said, اِدْفُنُوا صَاحِبَكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْسِنُوا كَمَا يَأْسُنُوا الْبَشَرُ Bury your friend, he is stinky. He stink as all human, they stink. So how Muhammad, his belly became full of fart and gas and he stink. And even the hadith says that his, his, his fingers, they shrink and, they be, and his nails became green. So how the Muslim were able to find about Muhammad that he is dead right away and he stink in less than three days and his nails became green and his belly became big and he full of fart and he stink. Yet Suleiman is dead for a year just because he's holding a stick, nobody noticed. By the way, I have two sticks. So, and, and I'm, I'm planning, by the way, to go live in YouTube when I'm dying. I will buy a camera to be sure that this is, will work. And I will hold two sticks. And the Muslim will think I am alive for the coming year, at least. And I will be sure that there's no termite here. Actually, I will, you know what? I'm going to use a two stick made from aluminium. They will never rust and no termite will eat them. You know what? I mean, the story is so good to be true. It must be true. His wives come into the room, in and out, his servants, his slaves, his whatever. Nobody noticed that the, the, the ants are on the stick. Okay, now the ants are working in the stick. <laughs> Forget about the guy is dead. They did not notice that there is a lot of ants. What's wrong with those? It's like, you know, Muhammad, when, when you remember what the story of Muhammad, there is a dead dog under the bed and he was there for a few days and, 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 and the angel never came in. How in the world there's a dog under the bed? Do you know how, do you know how bad the smell will be for a dead animal after a few hours? It, this is why many people, they, like, if, like those who live... Uh, uh, like a house in a village, etc. They, they don't use uh, uh, poison for rats or mice because the rat she will eat the poison and then will go hide itself somewhere and die. And then the smell will be like uh, like a grave inside the house. Just a, a rat. Imagine a big dog, puppy, at least like four or five kilograms of, of meat. And this meat is decay under the bed of Muhammad, and Muhammad did not notice. You have to be more stinky than the dog, the dead dog himself. Now go into the story of Jesus. We will find that the Quran says something very weird and very funny. As you see, Allah, he have time for all the false and stupid stories about flying carpet, Suleiman, genie, Afrit, uh, looking for women who have no hair in their legs, they have a beautiful private part, but when he speak about Jesus, just a short verse. There is no explanation. And because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, Allah Messenger. Like the, the Jews, they say he's Allah Messenger. <laughs> he Muslims. 
Since when the Jews admit, let us say for the sake of argument, Allah here means God, which is not, because Allah is the name of the God of Islam. But let us say for the sake of argument, this is, this is what it says. But since when the Jews acknowledge Jesus to be even a messenger or a prophet? Any Muslim can answer me? This is what the Jews says. The Jews, we, they say, we killed the Messiah, the messenger of Allah. And the Muslim can show me the reference. Which book of the Jews says that they killed the Messiah, the messenger of Allah? Anyone? The Jews don't admit, don't agree with, uh, they don't believe in Allah. And the Quran says that. In different verse, the Muhammad he says that the Jews believe that Uzair is son of Allah, but not even a single Jewish book says that. And since when the Jews believe in Allah anyway? So here you see how stupid the story, because the Jews will not admit that he is a messenger and we killed him. What the Jews, they say, those who want to kill Jesus, that he is not a messenger. He is someone who claimed to be God. The Jews, they were not going after Jesus to kill him because he is claiming to be a messenger. The Bible says the Jews wanted to kill him because he made himself equal to God. And then the story continue. But it appeared so into them. And then you ask the Muslims, what do you mean it appeared so to them? It's appeared so to them that they crucified Jesus. And look here how stupid even the story. The story confirmed that the Jews, when they say we crucify, they crucify the Messiah. Which Messiah? Jesus. Which Jesus? The son of Mary. You might see a Muslim saying to you, there is many, there is two uh, 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 person uh, was in the cross, in the crucifixion, their name is Jesus. Obviously the Jews, they killed that one. And here you see the stupidity because the Quran got them busted. The Quran says, Jesus, the Messiah, the son of of Mary. So he is not Jesus only. He is Jesus, the one who claimed to be the Messiah, and he is the son of Mary. They did not kill someone. He is a son of, uh, because that person will be the son of a man. The Jews, they don't call you, they will not call you, you know, the son of uh, 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 Jessica if your father is Suleiman. So, the son of Mary, because he have no father, is unique. He's the only one in this society. He's been called such a name. The Messiah is nobody name except the Messiah. And nobody dare actually to call that name at, at that time or even now. If you go in all Islamic countries, you will not find one person dare to call himself al Messiah. And the Jews until now, they are waiting for the Messiah. So if the Jews uh, uh, say, we killed the Messiah, that's, that's, the, that's the most stupid thing ever because they are waiting for the Messiah. <laughs> Is that correct, guys? Isn't it every single Jew who did not convert to Christianity and now desperately waiting for the Messiah? How are they going to kill the Messiah? If they say we killed the Messiah, that means they admitted that he is the Messiah. But the Jews, they would never do that. This is their dream. This is their king they are waiting for. They will kill only a person who they think he is not the Messiah. There is no way the Jews will kill the Messiah. So, the story itself is proof that the author is an idiot. 
he just put contradiction after contradiction after contradiction and then to make it more stupid it says it was made to appear to them okay so you ask the Muslims what does that mean they say Allah made someone look like Jesus in the cross but that's mean Allah is not just because you are sacrificing a human being to be killed to save a human being same time can't Allah save Jesus without this game number three based on this story the one who created the Christianity is Allah if there is no Jesus on the cross there's no Christianity Christianity is based on that Jesus for God he loved the world he sent his only begotten son and what he did the most the most amazing thing he did prove how much he loved us he sacrificed his life so if that never happened Jesus is just no he you know if Jesus look look at this stupid here if Jesus is still alive at that time and uh, he lived in this earth and then he died like everybody then nobody will believe him you son of God you, you here we go you are aging you are getting old then you became 60 70 80 90 100 what is that? and then you die so you are not why Allah he did this why he take Jesus to heaven and right now he is in heaven and that made me as a Christian more strong in my faith why because even the enemies of Christ the Muslims even the Antichrist or his Antichrist Muhammad the Najis Muhammad even those the most enmity to Christ and Christianity they admit that Jesus the Christ is in heaven so how us the Christians can take away such a belief from our belief if the enemies of our belief they accept it are, are you following with me what is the point Jesus is in heaven why Allah he took him to heaven what about Allah he sent him back to earth a few years after didn't take him 50 kilometer away move him to Damascus send him to Australia you do not need to take him to heaven when Allah he took Jesus to heaven was that because this is a plan of Allah or because it was a rescue of emergency and that will take our discussion to different level and you will see how stupid this religion is because according to Islam everything done as destiny so if the Jews they decide to kill Jesus it was destiny <laughs> and then if you think about it more deep we will get more dizzy so Allah he decided to make the Jews kill Jesus then Allah he decided to save Jesus from the Jews and then Allah he said to himself how I'm going to save Jesus who I want the Jews to kill him from killing him so Allah he made someone look like Jesus and then Allah he have now two Jesus one is the true Jesus and one is the fake Jesus then the Jews they enter to the room they said to him which one of you is Jesus the fake Jesus he says trust me it's me I have the credit card so they look at his credit card he have it and you know as long he have visa he got that he got the trust so they arrested the fake Jesus so now why Allah took him to heaven I mean already they arrested the wrong Jesus so why we need to take Jesus to heaven and look at the Abdul not a zero Abdul there to answer not a half Abdul not a baloney Abdul they are just busy going around the stone hmm? kissing the stone Mwah. and the funny you will see someone like Zach and Nayak brother 
Islam came to destroy paganism. And we are people who fight paganism. The Prophet he destroyed all the idol. And he left one idol, the Kaaba and the black stone. Brother and sister, uh, Zachary and I, I have a question. Christian friends, I told you, don't ask me a question. Uh, Zachary, I'm not asking you a question. I want an answer. Okay, exactly. Uh, uh, that is better. As long as you want the answer and there is no question, I'm willing to answer. What? That was stupid. But is this the same? I want an answer. That's me. I have a question. So what is the question? Uh, Zachary Naik told me I can't ask questions. Exactly. So what is the answer? You tell me the answer. <laughs> it's a Kura. Listen. Why you must think it's the black stone? Christian Prince. First of all, the black stone is sent by Allah. Zakir Naik, I don't care. Sent by Allah, sent by Trump. Why you are kissing the black stone? Christian Prince. First of all, Trump have nothing to do with black stone. I like his daughter. She is very beautiful. But the black stone don't cross the red line. Zakir Naik, what red line, man? It looks like a vagina. Have you ever seen one? Christian Prince, respect yourself. For sure, I saw many. What? I mean, I saw one. Ah, uh, okay. What you saw? Christian Prince, I can't tell you. <laughs> what a stupid religion. This is a religion? So going back to the verse. Allah, he made someone look like Jesus. We asked the Muslims, was Allah taking, did Allah take Jesus before he, before the arrest or after the arrest? Zero Muslim can answer because that answer alone will destroy all of Islam. For if they, if they took Jesus, if Allah, he took Jesus to heaven before the arrest, then there is no need for the cloning. If he took him after the arrest, if Allah, he took Jesus to heaven after the arrest, there's no need for, clone, for, for taking him to heaven. Because now the fake, the fake Jesus is arrested. That's it. They, they, were not, they are not going to look for the second Jesus. The stupidity of this cult is beyond imagination. Anyone have a question? Anyone have a question? Uh, sorry, I don't have an answer. <laughs> All right. The word Naik have any meaning in Arabic? Yes, it's a dirty word. It means the F word, literally. But this is a word. Uh, only savage people they use it. You know, this is a street word. Uh, this is why you see Muhammad, he actually, it's appeared in the Hadith. There's a man, he came to Muhammad and he said to him uh, that he did sleep with the women. Muhammad, he said to him, uh, uh, he said to him, uh, did you F her? He used exactly the word you are talking about. Aniktaha. And this is the word in Arabic. And I changed it in Muslim to say it is not the F word. Challenge. Challenge of a million dollar. So very filthy, trashy man. You know, there's many words you can use to ask, did you sleep with her? You say, say, sleep with her. Did you lay with her? Did you have intercourse with her? What in the world, what language he is using? Look at the Muslim translation. Did you have intercourse with her? But Muhammad did not say, did you have intercourse? He said, did you F her? Any question? And you know about asking where is Jesus and where he is now. Uh, when the Muslim they say that Allah took him to heaven. But there is a question about the verse speaking about Jesus going to heaven. Because the Quran says that Allah will make Jesus die and after he die, Allah will take him to heaven, not before. 
chapter 3, verse number 55. Uh, and here when you say the Muslims and remember, what remember? I mean, this is, you see, even the language is so stupid and the Quran is so stupid and the translators are so stupid. How in the world you say and remember as if we were there? If the conversation was between Allah and Jesus, how we, how we, what do you mean, do you remember? <laughs> In Arabic it says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِسَى إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِسَى Where was إِذْ? When, when that happened? That happened in the past. Who is talking? You see, if the one is talking here in the verse is Allah, the verse is wrong. Who is talking? And then, when Allah said, O oh Jesus, Who's talking? And when he said that, it's in the past. I am gathering thee. Gathering thee, why he was pieces? Do you see how they fabricate the translation? In Arabic it says, I am gathering thee, why he is a tribe? Jesus was a million person and then I will make him one person. In Arabic it says, Inni mutawafika, what gathering? gathering? What, what gathering? You change the translator. Which translation is that? Let us see which donkey. Hilali and Khan. Let us see different translation. Maududi. Dudi dudi. Dudi dudi dudi. Uh, gathering the uh, Muslims, what what a hypocrite religion! Look at this, and it was part of his scheme. When Allah said, "O oh Jesus, I will recall you, I rose you up, recall you." In Arabic, it says "mutawafika." Mutawafika mean I cause your death. What recall you? Tesla is calling the, old, the, the new cars because the battery have a problem. This is what the Quran is saying. He Muslims, mutawafika me recall you now. In the other translation was gathering thee. <laughs> gathering thee. It changed the translator. Let us play this game. Khattab. Let us see what Khattab will say. He khattab, what? If, 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 O oh Jesus, I will take you and raise you up to myself. That's it. There is no gathering, there is no recalling, and there is no causing your death. Change the translator. Maybe we'll find one of them is have little dignity. Itani Allah. What, is, what kind of a translation is called Itani Allah? I am terminating you. Oops. Look, 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 look. One was saying, gathering you, gathering thee. The other one saying, recalling thee. And now I'm terminating your life. The terminator. But this guy is trying to be more honest. So Allah will terminate the life of Jesus and then he will take him up to heaven. Do you see it? I mean, do you see how they lie in their translation? All the other translation, they hide it that it says, I will cause your death and take you to heaven. This Abdul Muslim, he says, I will terminate your life. How come that does not appear in the other translation? What is the problem? I will tell you what is the problem. The problem is that this verse will destroy all the claims of the Muhammadan. Why? Because the claim of the Muhammadan that Jesus, when he come back second time, then he will die and then resurrection day will happen. Here in this verse, Jesus, before he go up to heaven, he have to be dead, literally dead. Then Allah will raise him up and take him to heaven. So this verse mean, 
or based on this verse, Jesus must stay in this earth until the day of resurrection. Do you see how stupid this book is? This is what happened when you ask the Muslim an embarrassing question like Allah he pray on Muhammad Mimi uh, hijab he says Allah he said uh, pray for not two as if it make any different Allah pray for or two you eat it doesn't make any different still he's praying the question is Allah he pray to who so suppose he solve it now are we taking notes Look, Tamara, she just said, wow. If Tamara, she say, wow, that means something wrong happened. What happened, Tamara? Are you talking about what I said in the video or about a dish you are eating? Any Abdul? Anyone? Do you see that you study any verse in the Quran, you will see, a, 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 you know, when, when this guy Yasser Qadi, he said there's a hole in the narrative. I mean, what hole? The whole religion is full of holes. It's like a screen door. Any verse, I can show you tons of mistakes in the same verse, not that even the chapter. Can you have do? Isa will break the cross and kill the pig. Look like an easy, passy job. For now, he is unemployed waiting for a new contract. <laughs> and you know, that is even more funny. I mean, Jesus will come in the day of judgment and he will be face to face with Mr. Pig. You know, like the cowboy song? And the whistle of the cowboy. And Jesus will say to the pig, We count to three, and the one who shoots faster, he is the winner. And then what will happen, brother? What will happen, brother? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Who can deny such a thing? Jesus will kill the pig. The enemy, you see, your enemy is in the size of you, who you are. Your, 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 your enemy is your size. So, if Allah enemy is a pig, Allah must be a pig. Do, do you understand me? Who is the enemy of Allah is a pig. It's not even a lion. Imagine if we say uh, uh, Putin, his enemy is a pig. That would be the most silly, stupid thing, right? I mean, this guy, he have nukes, he can burn the earth. And then his enemy is a pig. So what those nukes for? To kill the pig? Your enemy is your size. What is the enemy of Allah? Is a guy go. Allah must be an ant. The God who is his enemy is a guy go. He must be an ant. Because who hate most? The guy go, ants, mosquitoes, insect. Somebody is saying, <clears throat> uh, stupid CP. This is a smart Muslim. Christian Lord is nailed. Hmm. You remind me of an Egyptian. He was a donkey like you. He said to me, Well, if Jesus is the Son of God, don't you think that his Father will save him? So look what you just did. You are saying that Jesus cannot be the Lord because he was nailed. But isn't it your religion says he never been nailed? And now we nailed you. 
Because if the reason for you to reject Jesus to be God, that he was nailed, well, in your religion, nobody can nail Jesus. You see how stupid you are? You are a certified donkey like your prophet. Go ahead. Do some chew of the grass I left for you. Somebody saying from what demonation you are? Uh, I don't know. Sometime I'm from Samsung. Sometime I am with uh, Oppo. Sometime what demonation? Christianity does not have demonation. Jesus said, Whoever believe in me and die will live. Whoever believe in me and die will, li will live. So we Christians, we, we don't believe in domination. And if there is people who believe in that, this is their fault. The Bible is not the book of domination. It's not the book of the Jews or the Christians or, you know, it's the book of God. The Bible is not the book of the Catholic or the Protestant or Orthodox. It's the book of God. And Jesus is not for the Catholic, neither the Protestant, neither those who call themselves whatever names. Jesus is the God of all mankind, even those who reject him, even the Muslims, even the pagan Muslims, the black stone kissers. So when people, they create a school of thought, they create a school of thought. But God, he have one school. That is his words. And if you believe in his words, whoever you are, if you believe in what he did to you, whoever you are, you are saved. We don't worship Bishop. Actually, the Quran have a verse which is stupid, showing us how stupid Muhammad is. So the Quran says that the Christians and the Jews, they took their uh, monks and rabbis, as God. Why? Why the Quran say such a thing? Huh? Chapter 9, verse number 31. It says, They have taken as lords beside Allah their rabbis and their monks and the Messiah, the son of Mary. But the fact the one who did that is the Muhammadan. Who is your Lord, Muslims? If it's Allah, then why you follow Muhammad when he says something against the Quran? Any answer? Who is your Lord? The Quran say you do muta. Muhammad says, okay, stop doing muta. But there's no verse in the Quran received from Allah saying, don't do muta no more. So, the Muslims, in fact, they are the one who took their God as Muhammad instead of Allah. For us, we don't worship Allah anyway. Allah is a fake name, never, never was exist, and it will never be exist. Who is this Allah? You know, is, is a name of a pagan. God exists, for, you know, centuries before Islam, thousands of years actually before Islam. And this God, nobody saw him, nobody spoke to him. Muhammad claimed that he worshipped him. And in fact, the verse in the front of us says, beside Allah and the Messiah. In the Muslim translation, it says, just to, you know, read, read carefully. This is false translation. It says, they took their lords beside Allah, their rabbis and their monks and the Messiah. That is a false translation. In Arabic, it says, So, they took their monk, their, their rabbis and their monks as lords instead of Allah and the Messiah, the son of Mary, which means the verse confirming that the Messiah is God and they should not follow their monks or rabbis, but they should follow Allah and the Messiah. Actually, to get any Muslim busted with this translation, go to, uh, I think it's called Quran.com, like there's a website, you can move the, 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 the mouse over the word one by one. Don't listen to the translation. Just move the mice, the mouse over the word, and it's going to translate for you. Or you can translate using Google Translation word by word. And you will see what I'm talking about in order.
Faisal, Faisal, you guys, Faisal, he knew how uh, uh, Jesus have long hair. <laughs> hey, Faisal, Jesus have long hair, brother? Is that what your prophet said? Wait, what are your prophets saw Jesus? Can you tell us? Faisal, where, where are your prophets saw Jesus? You see, Muhammad, he went to heaven. He saw Moses. He saw Abraham, he saw Adam, he saw Isa, etc. But Muhammad is so stupid to the point he forgot that the first one will be resurrected in the day of judgment is him. Which means all of them they are dead. And the Quran says that all messengers before thee, they pass away. So how he went to heaven and he saw Adam, Abraham, Moses, You know, I love the Chinese when they say he left as a donkey, never came back as a horse. Uh, somebody saying, can somebody send me the verse where it says Allah will put the sin of the Muslim? This is not a verse. This is a hadith of Muhammad. This is not a verse. Uh, no calls today. You see, these days I'm traveling, so my system is not the you know like not uh, uh, like uh, the most uh, advanced uh, system uh, so uh, uh, until you know until I go home to you know two years from now we will not take calls no no I'm just joking we will take calls maybe soon I will start I need to install uh, I install actually Skype I need to make a new account I could not find the, the password for the new account I made to take calls because those software here when we when we give a link uh, you know, last time we gave a link, Muslims they start calling us and playing porn. Very savage people, trashy, you know. So we want uh, something more uh, control, like we're able to control it. The second you post the link, you cannot stop them. They will keep calling and even, even if you don't see them, they will appear on my screen, you know. So we want to have like a better control uh, to use software. Uh, you know, uh, uh, let us ask the question to Faisal, as long as Faisal is the brave Muslim, and he is the only one who said something until now. Hey, hey Faisal, we were asking the, the Muslims, I don't know if you are a Muslim, I am assume until now you are, but soon you will leave Islam. In Arabic here, it says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِيسَ إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ And this is the Muslim translation. It says, Allah said, O Jesus, I'm terminating your life and rising you to me. When Allah he terminated the life of Jesus, Faisal, can you help us? You are the only smart Muslim is exist in this galaxy, and without you, we will never get help. Now Faisal he will go to the internet, and he will start searching. Searching, 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 searching. There again, there again, there again, then then there again, searching, searching, searching. There again, there again, searching, there again. There again, there again, there again. And Faisal, he will come and he will say to us, Yes, Allah, he said, I will terminate you. But do you see, he says, I will. Uh -huh. well, when Allah, he says, I will, that means it will never happen. He will go get you busted. <laughs> Don't you see, it says, I will. Have you ever seen Allah doing something he said he will do? Never happen. I will. I will. Allah is the same as the government in the Middle East. There's a guy, he took a picture when he was six, seven years old next to a hole in, in front of his house. And then he took a picture in the same place when he is 35 years old and the hole is still there. Because they will fix it, inshallah. You call the city, they say to you, inshallah, brother, inshallah. If Allah is willing, inshallah. We are going to fix it tomorrow, inshallah. And every tomorrow is tomorrow. Tomorrow never come. Tomorrow come, it became yesterday. You know? Uh, do we have any Abdul? 
inshallah they will be able to answer us hmm. all right we have almost 1000 listener but zero abdul beertus to answer us and now they are taking a hike hmm. i see hakim he want to talk okay hakim you can answer us Hakim, you want to call me? Are you sure, Hakim? Okay, you are not a scammer, Hakim. Give me, give me your Skype, Hakim. Give me your Skype. Post it in the chat. <clears throat> give us your Skype, Hakim. We will find a solution to call you. I bet you this is ultimate fort. <laughs> how, are, how are you doing, ultimate fort? Give me your Skype, go ahead. Ah, no, you see, here we go. That's me, you are a fraud. You are the one who want to play for us porn, right? Your mother and your doing things like last time we know what you would do you are a scam block him guys block him this is the same guy yeah he don't have a skype yeah you can create a skype in two minutes as you see and you know by the way here we go feel free you can give me the answer here and we can put it on the screen but you are a potato you are a porn you know, last time we gave the link to the Muslims, they start playing porn, this guy having sex with his sister, then his mother, she opened the door, then his father, he says, may Allah bless you, and then he said to him, didn't I tell you, don't use, don't, don't uh, do sex without condoms, and then he said, oh, where well, I'm going to be, uh, buy condom, he showed him the hadith where it says that if a man, he want to have sex with a dead man or dead woman or young boy, he have to wash and she have to wash. Do you know the Hadith Hakim? That is so harsh. Well, this is here. We do harsh talk. You don't like it, don't come here. Uh, this is what the Hadith says. I'm not making things up. We can show it in the screen, but that will turn our topic to... Uh, very adult topic. Notice what they did last time we gave them the link. You guys, do you remember? I had to delete my uh, my whole stream because you know I added the person in the screen. Like when you when somebody call you, he show up in the screen, right? And then they start playing porn. They are very filthy, trashy people. You know, they they didn't know how to fight what we do. You know, until now many people don't understand that. When you follow Muhammad, you are literally satanic. And because they are satanic, they do what nobody will do. Imagine somebody want to prove us wrong. What he do, he play porn. Can you believe it? You cannot trust a Muslim. Trusting a Muslim is a proof that you are a fool. So always we have to be in control of the conversation, otherwise they will go so low. And we cannot go low to that level. Do we have any question here? Any question? Okay, any answer? <laughs> as long as there is no questions. Do we have any Zakir Naik here? Hey Bruce Lee, my, how are we doing? My, my, Bruce Lee, you are here? Guys, I used to, me and Bruce Lee, we, like, we used to serve together in the army, in the Chinese army in Brazil. 
And then one day, you know what happened? Uh, we were sitting together, me and Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. You know Jackie Chan? I think he is not famous. You do not know him. Anyway, he's like, you know, he's, uh, Jackie Chan is from Netherlands. So anyway, like we were sitting together and then uh, Prophet Muhammad, he came to us. And he said, I, I tell you to join Islam. We told him what, what you give us. He said, uh, 70 versions. Jackie Chan, I mean, hardly he can sleep with one, his wife. He got scared, he, you know, right away he escaped. That's why he broke his shoulder. Look, he jumped from the window. He said, I cannot do that. You know, you know, get. And he jumped from the window. He forgot its second floor. He broke his shoulder. Until now, Jackie Chan, he cannot use his uh, third shoulder, not the second one or the first one. And then, you know, I, like, I look at the Bruce Lee. I said, hey, Bruce Lee, what do you think? You know, he said, let us negotiate. So we asked Muhammad, how many? He said, 17, 72 women. If you are not a good believer, Bruce Lee, he said, what if I'm a good believer? He says, man, unlimited. Brosley, he said to him, if there's any down payment, he said, no. Inshallah, you will have them. So Brosley, he put his foot in the ass of Muhammad, and he said to him, Inshallah, I will hit you, and I will not break your ass. And boom, and he threw him from the window. And then he fell in the top of Jackie Chan, because you remember, I told you Jackie Chan, he jumped from the window, right? But he didn't move. He didn't move. And that broke his fourth shoulder. So now Jackie Chan, he have the third shoulder and the fourth shoulder, which is proving that Muhammad fell down from the second window, proving my story. And this is a story, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 003040. And I challenge you to prove wrong. And actually, Bruce Lee is here. Hey, Bruce Lee, do you agree or not? Just, just you know, he is here. I mean, see, I'm, I'm not even speaking his back. The guy is here. You can ask him. We have witnesses. You know, we, we, if we are talking about fornication, we need four witnesses. If we are talking about Muhammad, we need two witnesses. Me and Brosley is enough. <laughs> <coughs> true, true. Yeah, but until now, Brosley, he did not say it's true. I don't know. He think, I think Brosley is not remembering the story. What's happened, Brosley? I'm so disappointed, man. Until now, you are not say yes, say no, say something. People will think I'm not telling the truth, man. Look at Bruce Lee saying, you give me five dollars to say yes, it's true. <laughs> you know, always this Bruce Lee, I don't like him, you know. He always, he hold you from the third hand, which you like, unbelievable. Yeah. You might ask yourself, how in the world we have second shoulder, third shoulder, fourth shoulder? Those things happen to us. Jackie Chan is an Arab. Bruce Lee is an Arab. I am an Arab. We are different. We have four shoulders, five shoulders. Like Muhammad, he asked the guy to give him the shoulder for the goat. He gave him the shoulder. He asked him to give the second shoulder. He gave his, imagine he ate, he ate a shoulder, a goat shoulder. He ate it in one meal. In the same meal, when he finished the first shoulder, he asked for the second shoulder. He finished it. And then he asked the guy for the third shoulder. The guy, he said to him, Prophet, the goat have only two shoulders. <laughs> Super intelligent Prophet. Oh boy. <clears throat> All right. Are we, uh, do we have a good time to the guys? To the guys, you know, did we have a good time? Who did not have a good time here? I will give you until the end of the day today, like maybe until maybe 10 hours from now, etc. You watch those videos and then I, will, I have to delete them. Uh, as you know, I keep my channel clean. I don't keep my videos. So if you are a person who download my videos, upload them in your video in your channel feel free as soon as we finish to download and take them any question anyone مدرس مسيحي تخرج من جامعة المزار بالقاهرة يقدم 
تسويسا للمسلمين في جميع العالم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله يقدم تسويا تسوى I don't know what is that uh, your Arabic my friend is very really strange أبو uh, <coughs> what is that توس توسيا what is that all right must be true story are you using Google translation or something Do you still drink a lot of coffee every day? My friend, I drink coffee every day. But I'm protected by Allah. Every day I say Ya Wadud, Ya Wadud 100 times. And all my sin is forgiven. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? You say you're your wadud. Your wadud, your wadud, your wadud, your wadud, your wadud. Like what the heck? Ya wadud, but hold on. Ya what 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 I'm typing here? Hold on. I need to turn the light on. If you say Alhamdulillah 100 times, all your sin is forgiven, brother. Subhanallah wa bihamdillah. Ah, okay. What else? Uh, if you say I seek forgiveness from Allah 100 times in Arabic, in Arabic, you have to say it in Arabic. Your sin is forgiven, brother. Okay. Uh, he said. What, what? Yeah, this is a different one. Yeah, you say I seek forgiveness by Allah. My, he add now my heart to it. Your sin will be forgiven. Uh, let us see this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, all of them, they are really. They, look how advanced this religion. You know, you say, Ya Wadud. 100 time and your sin is forgiven but the hadith I want it is not coming where is your wadud weird, weird. I don't see Everyone who says there is no God but Allah and there is no partner with him, he is the king and he is the, the thanks to him and he is able for everything 100 times, all his sin is forgiven even if he have a sin like the form of ocean, brother. You see how easy? Just say it. All his sin will be forgiven even if it is the form of the ocean. But until now, I don't see Yawadud. Because I like it. Yawadud is the easiest one, you know. Yawadud. Very easy. Look, look how many sentences. I mean, he, this guy, he keeps saying things, making things up. Any of those you say, Subhanallah, he will be hamdi 100 times. Yeah. Oh, stupid religion. Even they have songs for it. Let me type it again. Maybe I can find it. Yeah, maybe in not not in this uh, English. Yeah, it's not coming here. I think maybe this is in. 
maybe Musnad Ahmad or something. <laughs> Look at this hadith as an example. This is about the Messiah when he come back. Uh, one morning the Messenger of Allah he made the mention of a Dajjal. Dajjal simply is somebody he claimed to be the Messiah. Dajjal means the, uh, the, the, the liar. Dajjal is a scammer, liar. And he described him uh, to be uh, insignificant and he is the same as described, etc. And then when he went to him, the Prophet of Allah, in the evening he perceived the sign of fear in our face. So the Muslims are afraid now from description. He said, what is matter with you? Muslims are scared. We said, O Messenger of Allah, you talk about the Dajjal this morning, rising your voice and lowering it until it. We, we thought he was hiding in this palm tree, a grove. <laughs> Muhammad is a good actor. He raised his voice, he lowered his voice, the Dajjal is here, he's here, the Dajjal is coming. So the guys, they saw it like, man, the guy is here. So he said, something other than the Jal make worry about you. If he appear while I am with you, I will defend you against him. But if he appears after I die, then every of you is his own defender. Allah is the one who remain after me to guide Muslims. The Jal will be young man with very curly hair, with one eye, broad reading, broad reading, with the, uh, with which he cannot see, between two bracket, I compare to Al-Uzza ibn Qatan. This is a guy, he have dark skin. So even, I mean, look, look at this, look at this stupid person. He is describing the Dajjal, if someone, he have a little dark skin, not, to, not, not to black, he have a curly hair, he's an African as a look, and he is the false messiah and he is shaitan. He, who amongst you who survived to see him, we should recite over him the opening of ayat, Surat Al-Kahf, i.e. Surat chapter 18, verse number 1. <laughs> you see how easy the Dajjal he comes. So why when a Messiah, he is the only one who will destroy him and the... Uh, Anyway, you can read the rest of the story. You will see the one who will destroy him is the Messiah. Nobody can overcome this guy except the Messiah. So it says here, O Messenger of Allah, how quickly he will walk upon the earth. There he said, like a cloud driven by the wind, i.e. very quickly, he will come to the people and call them to his obedience and they will affirm their faith in him and respond to him and then he then give command to the sky and it will send rain upon the earth and he will then send a command to the earth and will grow vegetation i mean this guy become god how he is a false messiah how he can command the sky any muslim can explain to us he command the sky, the house of Allah. All of this will be done by the false messiah and the real Muhammad cannot do any of this. <laughs> anyway, let me give you the hadith so you can read the rest of it in your own, just for the sake of education. Okay? In case you like to, to be educated, if there's no harm, save it in your reference. God gave him permission so he can cast. Okay, why God did not give a permission to Muhammad? What's wrong? Are you saying to me that your God, he gave a permission to the Dajjal to do miracle nobody can do, but he did not give a permission to Muhammad to do 1% of the false man. And you are saying that God, he gave him permission. Does that mean he gave him the power to? Or just a permission? 
Can Allah, excuse me, can Allah do what the Dajjal would do? Can he, Allah order the vegetation to grow in a second? Prove it. Can Allah cut a person to pieces and he put him together in one second, as the Dajjal says, as your Prophet said? Prove it. Muhammad, according to the Muslims, Muhammad's sons, he have many sons, according to you Muslims, I believe he never have kids. However, each time he have a son, he die. He cry. He ask Allah for help. Did Allah raise his son? Did Allah save his son from death? Can't Allah save the children of Muhammad from death? How come this guy, he can do all those things? And he is a fake person. And look, if things can even go farther, uh, this guy is ultimate force and then Allah will send the Isa son of Maryam who will descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus and here you ask yourself is this hadith written really from Muhammad there was a minaret in the east gate of Damascus at that time <laughs> There was a mosque in the east gate of Damascus at that time and the minaret of the mosque is there? And why the minaret? Is that the highest building in Damascus? <laughs> Look, brothers and sisters, Jesus, he is descendant, but where he will go? I mean, he cannot go down to the ground right away. He will go down in the minaret. Yes, because the minaret is high. So Jesus, he descended to the minaret. He put his foot in the minaret. And then he jumped from the window. Then he jumped from the stairs. Then he opened the door. Then he go out to Damascus. He found the jail there. Muslims, really, Jesus will descend in the minaret of Damascus? <laughs> Is that the same as Harut and Marut? They descend in the, the Babylon Tower? Huh? Muhammad, he, he, he chose the, 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 the uh, like a sky uh, uh, building, high sky building. Ah, Muhammad, he knew that there is a... No, he said he would descend it in the Marat in Damascus, which is in, exist. What he will knew? What do you mean he knew? This hadith written actually, Bukhari, he came hundreds of years after your prophet. At that time already Damascus is under the control of Muslims. Long time ago. What a silly answer. But forget about, you know, this. Okay, why he would descend in the Minaret? Do you know how high the buildings now in Damascus? All countries in the world, they have a very high building. I mean, let us say the highest in Damascus, I don't know. Maybe they have 30 floor, maybe 20, I don't know. But Amar Minaret, what is this? Is that the airport? Good evening, my friend. Anyone who enter here says hello, shalom. I did not answer, forgive me, please, because we are focusing in the Manarat. This is the airport of Jesus, the Muslim Jesus. <laughs> Look, Jesus, he will land in the Manarat. He jump in the door. And then, do you know how they hide the minaret? Search it. This minaret is very, very little, tiny. What minaret? I mean, this man is so silly, so stupid. Hey, Sheikh, where you been? You are late. 
You're fired, buddy. Guys, did you see? Did you shake? Uh, did you see Sheikh Abu Butros when he was Suleiman video? You should see his video. Jibril came to him. He was he was a uh, prophet Solomon, and you know uh, he was holding the stick and the termite it is a stick. Just watch the video, you will love it. And don't forget to subscribe to his channel. I don't know where he got this stick. Where he is a shake? Where do you get this stick? Come on, be honest with me. Where are you gonna stick from? <laughs> this the stick of Solomon. It look real, man. Are you sure you did not go to the Jewish temple and you could take you took it from there? Hala 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 bo botros shakbarak. Do we have any Muslim here? Any Muslim wanna say something? Manarat is tall slander tower of a mosque having one more balcony from which someone's prayer is carried. My friend, the Manarat we can search it right now is so small, is so tiny, and you are a joker. Don't make me search for it. What are you talking about? Hold on. I will search for it and everybody will laugh at you. It is tall, slender tower. Like what? How 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 tall? How tall? How tall? Give me a second. Hold on. Everybody will die laughing at what you say. Uh, <laughs> it's tall. You must be a midget. Do you think it's tall? Huh. Guys, look how tall the Manarat. This is the Manarat. It's not even like three floors, uh, five floors maximum. Hmm. According to our friend here, the Manarat is so tall. Look with me, Abdul. I mean, if you want, if you want to lie, try to find a better liar, lie man. This is the menorah, and then he will say, "I did not say it is tall." Do you see it? This is tall. What is that? Thirty meter, twenty-five meter, and this is a fake menorah. It's something been added by Muslims over the gate. You can tell. Do you see the cement? This is ancient wall of Damascus. What this minaret? This is the Muslim. They occupy the land. They build the minaret. And here Jesus will, will go down. It's tall, guys. Tall, slender tower, brother. Tall, tall. Do you see the car? Let me, let me take your text away so people can see the size, really. How, how silly you are, what you are saying. Do you see the car down there? This is the size of the car. This is the size of the gate. There's a tree behind the minaret. It's almost in the high. You know, remember, the tree behind will look smaller because it's farther from us. Correct? So the tree behind the minaret is almost almost the, 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 uh, in the same height of the minaret. A tree. Try to find better lie, man. You are speaking to the Christians, not to Muslims. What a crazy people. And why Jesus will land in the Menorah? And how he will land there? What is that? Is that like an airport? What, what is exactly this Menorah to make? Muhammad is an idiot. The same he did with the, with, the, uh, with the tower of the Babylon. Harut and Marut, two angels sent by Allah to teach black magic, and they open a school. Harut school versus Marut school. Hey guys, if you are from Harut school, graduated, give me one. 
And tell me which year you graduated, please. <laughs> Harut first, Harut. How many of you graduated from Harut school? Which is in the Minarat, like the one in Hoributar? Oh, we have many. Smash, smash Allah, smash Allah a lot. Smash Allah. Okay. How many of you graduated from the school of Marut? Give me two. Any one of you graduated from the school of Marut? Peace you did. Smash Allah too. We have only one. Two. Oh look, we have somebody for this guy he graduated from uh, Joe Biden school. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, we have uh, 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 this person here saying you banned me in my main account I could not respond second go and open Minarat in Google and show them you close the share screen because you know they are tall but you picked a very you stupid idiot, this is the only one. This is this is the, the gate, the, the east gold gate of Damascus, donkey. There's only one gate. It's called the east of Damascus. There's many Manarat guys. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I want you to make a video and show us the real Manarat. Can you do that? Let me close my, my window. My voice will go far. Give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, you know when 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 Muslims they speak we we really laugh. It's it's like speaking to uh, it says here Al Manara al Bayda Sharqi Dimashq. The white menorah in the east of Damascus. So it is in the east. It is white. <laughs> and he's saying there's many menorah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the best comedy ever. So it is the white, he will descend, read carefully, this is your prophet word. Who will descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus? Let us go to the pictures I show in the screen. What the picture says, Bab Sharqi, East Damascus, door. And this is the white minaret. And you are telling me, I blacked your real account. I did not block any account of you, you donkey. Stupid. Hmm. Hey guys, don't forget to take selfie. If you go to Damascus, this is the airport of Jesus, brother. <laughs> Did you see the airport in Singapore? Why not in Singapore? I mean, why Damascus? Why not in Mecca? I mean, listen, listen. If Jesus is a messenger of Allah sent to the Jews, why is descended in Damascus? <laughs> and what if we destroy this minaret where Jesus will come? What if time come and we Christians take over Damascus and we take this stupid fake minaret? 
We will take it down. It's, it's a matter of time. Just wait. What, how this uh, Yura Isa will come down? He will use a robe? Isn't it obvious this man is making fun of you? Imarat? Manarat? What the heck is that? And then your prophet, he said the same about Harut and Marut. This guy is stuck with the Manarat. The Babylon Tower, according to Muhammad, is where the angel Harut and Marut, you know, they came down. Muhammad, he heard, there's a tower, the Babylon Tower, and, okay, where the Harut and Marut, they will come, came down, they came down in that uh, tower, and they opened Hori Buddha school. This is a prophet of God. This, this Manarat from Umayyad Mosque. Mm. Umayyad Mosque in the in the in the east gate of Damascus. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, first of all, you Muslims don't have Umayyad Mosque. This is the church. It's called Church of John the Baptist. And in that church, there is the grave of John uh, 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 inside. Actually, sorry, not... Uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, uh, John the Baptist, yeah. Yeah. And then the Muslim, they control it, and they turn it into mosque, because Islam is filthy, Islam is najis. Islam is satanic. They claim that they are Islam is peace. They take your land. They take your churches. They force people to pay jizya. They force people to convert to Islam. They humiliate them. They spit in their face. So they become majority. There is no Mahdi. Mahdi is a, is a fancy... Uh, uh, a fabrication of, of the Muslims. Like if you if you go and search in the hadith. That is typed Al Mahdi. You will find that ninety five percent of the stories You see those words, they appear, they have nothing to do with the word we are searching for. You will find that all the stories the Muslims they have, have no base. Where, where they get the stories of Al-Mahdi? Who is this Mahdi? And what he would do exactly? Even they don't know even <coughs> he's born of who? Uh, the Muslims, depend on their sect, they think that Al Mahdi is born of a woman, her name is Nargis. Some they th say her name is Mary. Some they say even Al Mahdi is the Messiah himself. Uh, depend in the sect, depend in the religion, Shia, Sunni, every, there's many sects in the Sunni, many Shia sect. Uh, so, you know, so uh, so when you ask the Muslims, who is this Mahdi? Everybody will give you a different story. You will find most of the stories actually coming from the Shia. The Shia, they have tons of stories about Al-Mahdi. They have no base for what they say, as usual. Mahdi. <clears throat> uh, 
All right. You know, the, the, especially the Shia, they have tons of stories. It's not only lovable, it's, the mo it's really stupid, extremely stupid. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? Uh, this guy is saying, five people spoke about me and no one showed me a single proof of what they are talking about. What the proof you want? What, the, what the, I showed you the Manarat. I'm showing you the Hadith. I'm showing you the Quran. What proof we can show you? What exactly you are looking for? Go ahead. Here we go. I'm giving you a chance to discuss with me the proofs. What do you want exactly? How we can help you? Hmm? I'm waiting for you. Tell me what exactly a proof you want. Proof for what? Five people talk about you. You, are, you became the center now. Here we go. I will make thousand people speak about you. What proof you are looking for? Mr. Kimshi, what's his name? Oshi Ishiha Itashi. Uh, it's supposed to be Japanese. Uh, that's right, must be Japanese. Yeah, Suzuki. Mr. Suzuki. Mr. Uh, Muhammad, he became Suzuki. Now, here we go. So, Mr. Uh, Ichi, what is the proof you are looking for? A lot about Islam being corrupt and being abusing to people. Okay, hold on. And making and abusing other people, religion, and making fun of me, yet I do not care. Okay, obviously you are here for a drama. Block him. You see, we ask you what to prove you are looking for. Look what you are talking. And now you want to play victim. It is you, Muslim, who call non-Muslims, kuffar, najis, filthy, donkeys, the worst of the creatures, evildoers, uh, uh, non-trustworthy, uh, corrupted people, and then you, you know what we did to you? We just showed you that you are a liar, and you said the Manarat is so high and so skinny and so etc. Block him, admin. We thought you are a man, it turned to be you are a fly. The Prophet said, when you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, spit at his face, force him to the most narrow alley. You are upset because, because you're not talking about me. Huh? Yeah. But you don't uh, get upset for doing the most filthy. Uh, this website cannot find even the hadith. Cannot find it. Give me a second. Hmm. You have to type it exactly as in the hadith to come true. Here we go. 
This is your faith, ye Najis Prophet. Abu Huraira narrated the Messenger of Allah, P B U H Shushu, said, Don't initiate the saluting, the salam to the Jews and the Christians when you meet them. And if you meet any of them in the road, force him to go in the narrowest part of the road, i.e., do not give the way to them to pass, but keep going. False translation. The narrow alley of Yaqahu is the sewage. In the side of the road, if a Christian man is working, or a woman, or etc., or even a child, and a Muslim is coming, even if he's a child, the Christian, he have to jump in the sewage. At that time, the sewage is a, like a tunnel for dirty line, dirty water beside the houses. So the Muslim, he will take the road. The Christian is not allowed to walk as a human being in the road with Muslims. And this coward speaking about we mistreating him, five people spoke about him. Coward son of Muta. Go do Muta. And is this is the Aif hadith? It is Sahih. Hasanon Sahih. Not only Sahih, Hasanon Sahih. Very filthy cult. Very disgusting. Muhammad, he is anti-Christ, anti-Christian, and anti-humanity, and he is the biggest scumbag in the history of mankind. Give me the website, the link of Muhammad being ridden, ride. You mean the, the, when the black people, they rode Muhammad? Uh, yeah, the hadith says they rode him, but I think they did something else to him. Because they were naked. I will give you the hadith in Arabic, but you need to use Google Translation. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is the hadith. I will post it for you. You will see that those. This is Musnad Imam Ahmad, uh, variant number one, page number three nine nine. It says that those black people who Muhammad they claim he claimed that they are genie. They were riding Muhammad and they were totally naked. And Muhammad was terrified from them and he, they rode him all day long. One after one, they jump on the back of Muhammad and they ride him like a donkey. And this is the hadith. And I challenge any Muslim to say we are lying. Here we go. Let me know if you could not open the link. And please don't forget to save the link because later you might ask me and I might not, not be here. You know, I'm not going to live forever. All right? Save your reference. One day you will need it and you will not find it. And you will say, well, to me, where CP, where we come find it, CP? I don't know how many times I posted this link, maybe a, a billion times already. Still people ask me where we come find it. Why? Because nobody saved reference. Nobody save reference. They don't. And actually, we can we can use Google Translation as we speak here now. And you can see, even in Google Translation, it's going to say they wrote Muhammad. I mean, imagine this is Muslim books. This is not books written by the Jews. Those are the Muslim books witnessing what Muhammad happened to him and the companion was there. So this is Musnad Ahmad. It says here, let me show the word. Do you see it in green? Yarkabuna Rasulullah. Fa'atu. فَجَعَلُوا يَرْكَبُونَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ 
وجعل نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقرأ عليهم وقال وجعلوا يأتوني فيخيلون ويميلون حولي so they start jumping around him and over him etc but they are riding Muhammad and Muhammad reciting Quran so where we will find this count with me the first line where it says 3778 then you go down second line third line and the fourth line it should be there in Arabic however in English it might take different uh, you know like numbers let us translate to English uh, where is English translation oh this uh, this browser will not translate this is a uh, this is not Google browser so let me switch to Google give me a second you have to use Google browser in order to translate uh, here we go so this is Google browser. I will use Google translation in front of your eyes. And you can search for it says that those black men they came and they were you know they were tall and they have no clothes on them. They were naked. They were totally naked. And then they began to ride the messenger of Allah. Do you see it? Do you see it? Is it clear? Yeah, and it was hurt so badly. The whole day they were they were riding Muhammad as a donkey. And you know, road in Arabic mean you know, like being in the top of him. We do not know how. Maybe they raped him, maybe they I don't we don't know what what happened. And why he's in pain, so bad in pain. And how come the Quran could not stop them? Where is Allah? Where is Jibreel? When Muhammad, he have a fight with his two wives, Muhammad, uh, the Quran came, says, if you don't repent, Allah is in his side, Jibreel in his side, the believers in his side, and furthermore, all the angels are on his side. And now Muhammad being rode by a bunch of African, having no clothes on them, riding him all day long. I mean, name one thing about this man is not stupid and weird. <laughs> Can you find one thing is, is right? How many men in history, black people rode them? <laughs> Do we have any any brother who is from Africa here? Do we have any brother from Africa? Say say one, give me one, please, if you are African. <clears throat> who is here from Africa? Come on, African American, African African, whatever. Give me one, if you are. Any brother from Africa? All right, my friend, you should be proud. Your people are the first people who use Muhammad as a donkey. I did not get that honor. <laughs> you should be proud of yourself. Hey, we are the African. We are the first one who rode Muhammad. <laughs> All day long for free. We did not even use a credit card. We did not even pay a penny. And he, you know, and the guy, he was reciting Quran like a stupid idiot, and he could not stop us. So put that in your, teach your children. We are the only one, the first one. The white man could not do it. The Roman man did not do it. The Asian man did not do it. It is us, brother. The African is the first one who wrote Muhammad. <laughs> All day long. And if they say to you, you are a liar, here we go. The reference in the front of you. <sighs> Christian of South Africa, I still have Muslims, family. Well, my friend, we pray that your family, they will come to Christ. But Islam is a stupid cult. And uh, you better work to save your family if you care for them. Good graduation, African. 
you are the one who wrote Muhammad for free without using a credit card. You are lucky, guys. I mean, you are really lucky. No credit card? Did you pay anything? Nothing? And you know, the, the story is so weird. I mean, I mean why there is African close to Mecca and they are wearing no clothes? Do you think those are from the Zulu tribe and they missed their way? Couple of thousand of miles? I think they are from the Zulu or from the Tutsi. It, you know, just they took the, the wrong exit in the highway, they find themselves close to Mecca. And because Africa is so hot, they were in, were in no clothes. Very makes sense. And then when they saw Muhammad, he looked like a donkey, so they start jumping at him. <laughs> Otherwise, I want to know. <laughs> Not Zulu, Zulu, Zulu. Zulu is a big tribe in Africa, Zulu. So, uh, when they saw Muhammad, why did they jump on him? Obviously, he don't look like a human. So, how in the world, those African, they end to be there? How in the world, they have no clothing? How and why they jump on Muhammad and they start riding him? The Zulu in Mecca. <laughs> you are a Zulu? Here we go. We have a brother here. He's a Zulu. <laughs> uh, good to have you, brother. Maldini Zawan. He, he, how, how, how big the tribe of the Zulu? I heard of it, but I don't know really too much about them. You know, like I saw some documentary, etc. But we are ignorant when it's come to Africa. We are, we are very educated when, when it comes to the donkey Muhammad. But, you know, to know about the culture of nations like the Zulu, etc., we don't have much to say. Uh, Zulu live down in South Africa, really? Not only in South Africa? I thought the Zulu is like extended tribe, not only in South Africa. They have like in many countries. Um, anyway <clears throat> so my friend if you are a Zulu make a sign put it in the your in your bedroom and tell you we, like be proud our grandfathers they rode Muhammad <laughs> good for you But be careful, Muhammad used to fall of a fleas, according to the hadith. So I hope he did not get you some. I mean, come on, you rode the back of the guy. <laughs> if I am you. <laughs> but anyway, if they are wearing no clothes, the, 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 the fleas will not be able to jump in their clothes and hide. <clears throat> some are saying that... Um, some are saying that Muhammad's real name is Qathim, Qathim Fethi. Well, Qathim have many meaning. However, whatever the meaning is, depending on the dictionary you use, whatever the meaning, Muhammad obviously, he changed his name. As many Muslims, by the way, like you ask the Muslims, you say Abu Bakr. Why they say Abu Bakr? Don't the guy, he have a name? Hey Muslims, what is the name of Abu Bakr? Why you say Abu Bakr? Why they say Umar? Hmm? Why do they say Abu Bakr? Why, why do they say the name Abu Bakr? Well, you know, there is many, there is many names, uh, uh, like uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad families, all of them, they are pagans. And they are slaves of pagan gods. There's many stories in the Hadith about people who converted to Islam. They changed their names. 
Like many, they say to you, well, Muhammad was not the only person who was called Muhammad. Uh, that is a, after changing their names. They have pagan names, and they want to uh, like wash themselves from their history, previous history, so they change their names. But after becoming Muhammad as a name, did you change yourself really from the previous history? Muhammad in the beginning, he was trying to make himself close to the Jews, especially after he moved and he lived between the Jews in Yathrib. So he starts saying, I don't believe in the Kaaba, the Lord of the Kaaba. I don't pray to the Kaaba. I don't, here we go. I'm not praying to Kaaba no more. I'm praying to Jerusalem. But when he noticed the Jews, they would never believe in him because he's a fraud. Then after he get rid of them, he killed all his enemies. He decided to go back to his roots because now Jews don't want him. Christians don't accept him. So what is left? The Arab. My people, the Arab, the pagan. They love the black stone, I will kiss the black stone. They like to pray to the Kaaba, I will pray to the Kaaba again. They like to be in Mecca, I will make Mecca my center. So, Muhammad, he, uh, he denied Mecca for long. He stopped praying for, to the direction of Mecca. He was praying to Jerusalem, where the Christians are praying, uh, worshiping Jesus. And if you ask the Muslims, why Muhammad chose Jerusalem? What is that? They say to you, there is the Aqsa Mosque. But there is no Aqsa, there is no mosque at that time there. What mosque? If they mean the Temple of Suleiman, well, even the Temple of Suleiman, according to the Quran, used to have statues. According to the Quran, if you go in the Quran, this is the Quran now, this is not uh, uh, like... Uh, Hadith where Muslim can say da'if, uh, weak, uh, you know the stories. So if you go in the Quran, let us go there. You will see the Quran saying, In the Quran, you will see a contradiction in two seconds. One verse is about uh, Abraham, which is a stupid verse, by the way, because Abraham, he said to his father, uh, Azar, are you going to worship statues? So if you go in chapter 22, it's about Abraham. If you go to chapter 34, verse number 13, it says that the genie, the shayateen and the genie, they make statues to Suleiman in the temple. So how the Islam is against paganism and statues and then a prophet of Allah giving the power to Suleiman to build Al-Aqsa according to the Muslim, this is Al-Aqsa, which is the temple of Suleiman. And he ordered his employees, which is shaitan, which is very weird. I mean, shaitan building the house of God. Shaitans, they built for him statues inside the synagogue. Do that make any sense? Let us say in the time of Suleiman, the shaitan was his Alexa. Like Alexa, turn the light on. Alexa. <laughs> they are builders who built for him and diver who die for him. And, you know, they, they construct, they build, they, you know, shayateen. The guy, his men, under his command, shayateen, they built for him, divers. Muhammad is so stupid to the point. This guy, he, he lived between the Jews. The Jews, they have tons of stories for their kids. Stupid stories, literally stupid stories. Muhammad, he took the stories, he put it in his book. I mean, this is additional proof that Muhammad is mentally ill. Anyway, 
Did we have a good time today? I hope we did and I hope we learned something good. Please don't forget to download the videos. I do, as you know, I don't keep my videos. Uh, in a few hours, I will delete the previous videos for the last few days, including this one. So please download them, share them in your channel. Leave a comment about what you heard, what, you, what we said, and take notes. You see, taking notes, saving notes can save you a lot of time in the future. You see, many of us, maybe you think Islam will never hurt you. But you never know, my friend. You have a children's, they go to school. In school, there's Muslims. They lie to them. They fool them. You need to educate your children. Never wait. Educate your wife, your sister, your daughter, your son. Don't think that bad things can never happen to you. Don't. Those who wait until the disaster hit are the fool. Which one is better? To protect yourself from a disease or wait until you get the disease? Think about it. And then when the disease is in the house, how you can get it out? So what we do here is very important to educate you and your children and your wife and your sister, your daughter, yourself. So nobody can fool you, nobody can fool your family. And now it is your part to deliver and to share what you learned. When we say to you, Islam without lies dies, it's true. Islam without lies dies. All this religion is based on lies. Look at this. Who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? Genies, shayateen, this guy have flying carpet. The guy, he died holding a stick. Nobody noticed that he is dead. I mean, you have to be a stupid kid. Even a kid will not, will, you know. Like I remember once I, I spoke to a girl. She's like maybe, I don't know, like eight years old. I said to her, I saw a broom. I said, this broom can fly. She said, oh, you think I'm stupid? <laughs> I said, this broom can fly. <laughs> like those, you know, the, 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 you see the one in the uh, Holy Potter, you know, this broom can fly. She said, do you think I'm stupid? I look at her, her man. She got me busted. <laughs> She's just like so little. So even a child will not believe in this garbage. But... The Muslim will not deliver the garbage. The Muslim, they will lie. They will say, have scientific miracles, you know, and they have a very professional videos. But in reality, the second we read, they show you false translation. They show you false explanation. But the reality is the opposite. And then your child will be a victim of deception. So let us together fight deception. Deception is our enemy. We are not here to fight with the Muslims. I don't hate the Muslims. We are here to fight Satan and his babies. And the babies of Satan for me is the lies of Satan. And those who spread the lies of Satan, they became soldiers of Satan. So my friend, save your nation, save your family from a big risky disease. It's called Islam. Islam is the biggest scam in this earth. And each time we go live on air, have you ever seen me saying something without showing you in the screen the proof? Have you? And actually, if it's happened, I got really upset. Oh, I mentioned this, I could not show it. So if it happened, really, really something I say, and then what? I prove, I, like, I show it, I could not find, because, you know, we go live, we don't prepare for things. Like, you know, the way I, you know, I see a video, I make title about it, I don't know even what they say in the whole video, and then we start explaining and answering. I don't prepare for, my, for, for anything. So, in a second, you say something in the chat, I say, I show you on the screen. The important is to educate ourselves, to take notes, to save them, get my books, 
and you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for the Lord that my books is published almost in all languages, from China to Russia to Albania to Croatia to Portuguese, Spanish, French, English, German, I mean, you name it. So the Lord, he blessed me by making my books not local, international, universal. So we can share the truth with as many as we can. But remember one thing. My work is so small, even though it's so big, which means compared to how much money they have, how much money they spend to promote their religion, my part is so small. However, the small part we do is shaking the hell of the kingdom of Satan in Indonesia, in Bangladesh, in Pakistan. Every day I receive an email about Pakistan government ban my video. I mean, have you ever heard of a government? They have nukes. They are worried about a video. So this is a religion protected by governments, by intelligence, by armies, by police. Yet they are terrified of a little video because Muhammad is little, Allah is little, Islam is so weak to the point they need protection. Uh, a Muslim here as an example saying, just to show you an example, Christians worship a prophet of God, not God alone, Mark 13, 32. <laughs> you know, a Muslim, when he say that, he remind me of a Muslim sheikh. He was in the stage, and then they heard something. First, they thought it is his stomach. And he heard, they heard it again. They thought again it is his stomach. Then they heard it again. Still, they said, well, maybe he have cold. Maybe it is fart this time. They heard it again. The sheikh, he had diarrhea. When he stood up, all the shit was coming from his jalabiya. So now if we go and we ask this Abdul, if we go right now to Mark 13, the verse and you, the one you want us to show in the screen, do you dare to say, I accept this verse? I challenge you. So the Muslim Muhammadan, you know, brother, he saw Mark 13, but he saw only a verse in Mark 13. He don't see the rest. He's a Mohammedan. <laughs> Their prophet, he cannot read and write. And the Mohammedan, they decide that they are worshipping a prophet. Mm. So, Abdul, do you accept the book of Mark? To prove who is Jesus and to make it simple for you do you agree with the chapter 13 of Mark what do you think do you agree and you know the funny is when a Muslim he tried to quote for us a verse from the Bible he said Mark 13 what verse Hmm. Are you there, Abdul? Is he texting? I don't see his text. Is he texting? Okay. <sighs> You stupid son of Muta. Isn't it the verse before it says, The heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away? Which words will not pass away? Is it the word of a man or the words of God? So when Jesus speaks, God is talking. So when Jesus he say, God is talking. And you are claiming that in that verse, Jesus 
is a prophet? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, we laugh at the Muslims. They are cute. Very cute. Any next? And not only that, by the way. This is a proof that Muhammad and the Muslims after him are liars. Because if you accept verse number 32, you have to accept verse number 31. And then and that's mean, whatever in that book must be true. Anything in that book must be true. For Jesus, he promised that nobody can take my words down. The heaven and the earth will be demolished, but not my words. Who have that such a power? Uh, any other thing? All right. I think we have enough for today, and it's time for me to go. I really appreciate you all. We are already here for two hours, 26 minutes and 55 seconds, 57 seconds, 58 seconds, 59. I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, and man, the prophet is more sexy than the moon. Uh, ah, look, look what this guy is saying. Christian Prince. We believe that the Bible has some verses right and some verses wrong. So we do not believe in the Bible, neither we don't disbelieve that there are some verses correct, but not all of them. Just to show you how stupid you are. I'm not insulting you. I will show you on the screen a hadith, and you tell me what do you think about it. Oh, I'm typing in English. What's, what's wrong with this? Uh... Look, my, my writing is messed up. Read carefully with me and laugh at yourself. This is your prophet said. He also said that the prophet uh, uh, said, as he said to the people of the book, about the people of the book. They used to read the Torah in Hebrew and expound it in Arabic to the Muslims. So God messenger said, neither believe, neither disbelieve the people of the book, but say, we believe in God. <laughs> And this is what you are saying to me now. So the stupid Muhammad, he said to them, neither say we believe, neither say we disbelieve. Do you know why? He admitting that he is ignorant and he is a liar. For if he's a prophet, it doesn't matter if they are speaking Hebrew or not. It doesn't matter what language they are speaking. He should be inspired by God and give the answer. If you go in different hadith, he said, This hadith is even more horrible. It says, we believe in what is sent to us and sent to you. You see in the translation here, they cut it off. In Arabic he says, قُولُوا آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا What is sent to us and the rest of the chapter. Let us go to the chapter. And then he will try to deny it and he will say, I don't accept the Quran. 
I just copy, paste the word. Hmm. Say, we believe in Allah and what is sent to us and what is sent to Ibrahim, what's sent to Ishmael, what's sent to Isaac, what's sent to Jacob, what's sent to the etc., the tribe, what's sent to, to Musa, the Isa, and whatever came to the Prophet. What does that mean? You cannot accuse us of lying, yet you cannot say we believe in what we believe. Let us go to the hadith and you see how Muhammad, the liar, he contradicts himself. They brought the Torah for him. Muhammad, he said, give me the Torah. He took a cushion he have underneath of him. He placed his hand on the Torah and he said, I believe in thee and him who revealed thee. But we just saw that the Torah is written in Hebrew and the Israeli, they are not reading in Arabic. And the book is a Hebrew. So how the stupid Muhammad, he just told the Muslim, don't say to them, we believe you. Don't say we disbelieve you. Yet, Muhammad here, he believe in what they have in the book without reading it. This is remind us what happened with this guy, Uthman. Actually, sorry, the, the comment is holding, hiding the screen. I apologize for that. I just noticed. So, Uthman two days ago, the stupid Uthman, the ketchup boy, he brought a book. It says, Mus'haf wa Uthman. To prove what? To prove that the Muslim, they have the book of Uthman. The Christian, they opened the same book he brought. They found in the book it says, it is impossible, it's not possible for this book to be a book or any Mus'haf of Uthman Mus'haf. It has errors, it has word missing, letters missing, etc. And this is what Muslim Muhammad he do. So, in one hand, he said to them, don't say we believe. Don't say to them, we don't believe. We accuse you of lying. Say we believe in Allah. And whatever sent he to But here, this is a physical book. So when you say to me, we don't believe in the book as a whole. We believe in some verses and we reject some verses. You are a liar. For your prophet, he take an oath of the whole book. As you see. Are you willing to take an oath in a book full of corruption? Are you? Muslims, they lie. Muhammad, he lie. I challenge you to give me the explanation why he swear by a book if it's not true. Especially after what you said, we believe the Bible has some verses are true and some verses not true. So Muhammad, he took an oath in the book, not some verses. He said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. In fact, Muhammad was converting to Judaism. When he said that, he became a Jew. He's not a Muslim. Are you searching Google? Who is next? And not only that, when you say to me, you believe in some verses, not all verses, so how your stupid Quran, he believe in all verses? Isn't it the Quran says, Musaddiqan lima ma'ahum? Is that your Quran? Is that your Quran? Believing in what you possess? Is that your Quran? Believing and confirming what is in their possession? 
Is it? So the Muslims, in, you know, in, because they are in a struggle with their filthy, stupid liars around the internet. While the Quran confirm our book, saying confirm what they possessed in their hand. Actually, in another, in the, another verse in the Quran says the word hands, not only what is with them. Here it says, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعْهُمْ Believing, believing, not confirming. There's a huge difference between confirming and believing. Believing. Muhammad believed in the Bible, which is with us. The verse in the front of you. You can take this word, مُصَدِّق, coming from صَدِّق, صَدَقَة, which means, صَدَقَة, he told the truth. مُصَدِّق, he believed in the truth. You can copy it as it is. I'm highlighting. Post it in Google. See what the meaning. Not confirming. So, uh, Abu Bakr Sadiq was called Sadiq because simply he believed in what Muhammad said. He's a Musaddiq. He be he's a believer. So his, re his name now became Abu Bakr the believer. The Quran is saying, <coughs> A book came, which is the Quran, confirming what is with them and believing in what is with them. Because you cannot believe unless you confirm. So how you say to me, we believe in some, we don't believe in some? Do you see, do you see how silly their answers? Is it up to you to say, I believe in some, when the Quran says, I believe in all? This is a great example of the hypocrisy of this religion. Those people are copy-paste. Their book saying, I believe in all what they have. They say, we believe in somewhat what you have. But isn't the Quran says, if this book is written by other than Allah, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. So if you Muslim believe in some of our book, not all of it, and the Quran believe in all our book, not some of it, that's a contradiction. That is a contradiction between you and the Quran. Which one is trustworthy? Your sheikhs or the Quran? And now if the sheikh will say to you, oh no, 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 we believe in some of it. Is Allah weak in Arabic to say some of it? Allah did not say some. He says, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَهُمْ And just to show you the corruption of this cult, if you go to the front verse, when it says, between their hands, the Muslim, they change the translation. Look, you see the word? If we click here, this is chapter 2, verse number 66. This is not about the Bible now, but just to show you the word. What it is, what is the, what, you know, uh, even here actually the translation is very weird. <laughs> the word yad in Arabic means hand. You see it? Bayna yadayhi, between his, between two hands. Click at the translation. 297. Confirming what preceded, nowhere it says that. It says what is between his hands. His hands. We change it. You know what? Maybe we can get lucky. Let us change the translator. Let us say Maududi. Maybe one of those Abdul will be honest for a second. Maybe you never know. We might get lucky. Here we go. Hmm. By Allah command revealed your heart and confirm what was revealed before it. Look at it. False translation. You take this part and you take it to Google translation. Actually, you know what? I will do it in front of everybody. Let me open Google translation. I just copy. I go to Google translation. Give me a second. Hmm. 
my Google translation open in a weird way. Let us open the front page. All right, here we go. I will do it in the front of your eyes. We copied the Quran, as you see, and we will paste exactly the words we copy. You can take a screenshot and compare it to the Quran. As simple as that. Here we go. Sharing the screen. Now we copy, we paste. In his hands. This is a translation of Google automatically. Do you see it? Baina yadayhi. Did you hear it? Go listen to the Quran. Exactly the same. What it says, the translation? In his hands. What the translation saying? They took it off. And there's tons of those verses saying the same between his hands. So the Quran confirm what is between our hands. You cannot debate a liar. You cannot debate a liar, but you can get him busted. I don't debate Muslim. I get them busted. I never debated one. Because in order to debate a person, you have to find a person who have honesty. Debate only will happen between two honest people who say truly what they believe. But when you debate a liar, he tried to bend and switch and change his belief in the answer in order to win an argument. That is not a debate. That a person is a liar and the only way to, to do what he, like to, to, to overcome such a person is to get him busted, not to debate him. And this is what we do here. Did you ask yourself why the translation is not showing between his hands? Where is the honesty? Why the Muslim they change corrupt the Quran? If the Quran says between his hands, why you don't use it? What is the problem? The problem is very simple. If they use such a phrase, that means the Quran is a false book. For this is how we can say to our children, the Bible is corrupted. How the Quran says confirming what is between their hands, and then we say to them, well, you know what? Their book is corrupt. The one who made the Bible is Paul. And not only that, even the story of Paul is mentioned in the Quran. Three messengers sent by the Messiah. The third one is the strongest. We go to Ibn Kathir and other, Al-Baghawi, etc. The master of Ibn Kathir, Al-Baghawi. What they say? The third one is Bolos. Who is Bolos? Paul. But every scum back in the internet from the nation of the Najis, God, Allah, he say, and he accused Paul, and we don't understand why, why Paul, why Paul? I mean, if Paul even did not write the Bible. What, what Paul did? Like, if we take the, all the writing of Paul and we destroy it, if you can, which we challenge you to do. And we have only the book of John, or the book of Mark, or the book of Luke. Is it different? <laughs> Why Paul? Because they are a nation, they have to blame somebody. John is the disciple of Jesus. We cannot insult John, Luke, Mark. So we, okay, Paul, go after Paul. But then we find the story of Paul in their book saying that Paul become blind. For Jesus, he appeared to Paul. And then Paul, he asked Jesus for forgiveness and he prayed to Allah. If he gave him his sight again, he will be his servant. This is in their books. And we have tons of videos about it. But those liars, they have no dignity. 
You cannot debate a liar, my friend, but you can get him busted. Just educate yourself and you will find always the answer. I want to say thank you all for being here. I think we have enough for today. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, Islam is a scam, and Islam without lies dies, as usual. Thank you. God bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince, who is serving you, who is serving you humbly for today. I hope the Lord will give us time to live more, so we can serve more. If not, maybe it's time for your children to do so. Take care, and I hope you learn something good for today. God bless.